Welcome to P. Clark Calc, where we have practical calculus for the busy math students. And here we're going to take a look at an application of the derivative of a polar function where we find tangent line slopes at the pole of that polar graph. Here we're taking a look at what's called a rose graph. It's a polar function in the form of r equals 3 times the cosine of 2 theta. And in these types of, of rose graphs, you're looking for sine or cosine of a multiple angle of theta. So if it's an even multiple, so here it's 2, it's, it's twice that number of what we call the petals on the rose. Um, the sine and cosine ones are the same shape. It's just where their attitude is on the plane. The cosine, if you think about it, if theta is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the radius is 3. So this graph is going to start out here. In polar coordinates, that'd be 3, 0. It's also 3, 0 in rectangular, which could be a little bit confusing. And as you rotate around in a positive direction, this graph is going to follow this path around the rows. And so what we want to do here is to determine, as it's making one full sketch of the rows, what, what are the tangent line slopes going to be when it's at the pole? Now when we say at the pole, the pole for a polar function is when the radius is zero, which means in rectangular coordinates it's the origin. So, so we're looking for what the tangent line slope is every time this graph crosses the pole right here, which as you follow the trace of the graph happens quite a few times. So the first thing we need to do is to determine when does that happen. That's part one of the problem. So we have to do a little trig here. We have 3, 3 cosine 2 theta equals 0, where cosine 2 theta is 0. Now remember, whenever you have multiple angle trig equations, you have to take into account that that period is changing also. So we state the solutions in the, in the general form here. So my solutions would be 2 theta is equal to pi over 2 plus multiples of 2 pi, 2 k pi, we're going to call that, and 2 theta is equal to 3 pi over 2, plus multiples of 2 pi. And then we solve. So our solutions here, general form for our solutions of when this graph crosses the pole, are pi over 4 plus multiples of 1 pi, and 3 pi over 4 plus multiples of pi. So if we just list those, and we'll put those off to the side, we'll need those in a little bit, we find that this is going to occur when theta is pi over 4. That one's pretty easy to see as we rotate in a positive direction and we get to pi over 4. My, my radius is decreasing. The graph's getting drawn into the pole. And then we have our next one is at 3 pi over 4. That's a little bit tricky sometimes when people start graphing polar functions. What happens here in, in this interval, the radius is negative, which when we're just plotting points in polar coordinates, we would never intuitively think to use a negative value for r, but, but it happens when we have polar functions. And so what it does is it reflects the graph backwards through the pole in that direction. So, so as we come around to 3 pi over 4, we hit this bottom, if we want to call it, pedal, and then we come back and we cross through uh, heading in that direction into quadrant 2. All right, next time we hit the pole is 5 pi over 4. So we would hit that as we finish the revolution around the pedal on the left of our rows. And that's going to take us up into quadrant 1. And we're going to hit the top pedal. And it will return back to the pole one more time. And that will be at 7 pi over 4. And then the graph would complete its full 2 pi revolution, we'd end up back where we started over at 0 0.30. So, so that's part one that you might want to take care of first is, you know, when, how many times does this graph cross the pole? Uh, so it can happen quite a bit in these rose graphs, especially if they have lots of petals. Then we have to go ahead and figure out, well, what's the derivative of, of the polar function? How do we find the tangent line slope here? And the tangent line slope dy dx is defined 
parametrically as dy d theta over dx d theta. And the key to understanding the derivative formula for polar functions is to, to think of the polar function in its parametric form. And that goes back to trig functions of any angles, um, you know, which tells us that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So really the way I like to do the, the polar graph tangent line derivative dy dx is to define the polar function in its parametric form and then just do the derivative parametrically. So in essence I'm going to figure out x and y as functions of theta and then I'm going to go ahead and take the first derivative using the much easier to remember parametric uh, derivative formula dy d theta over dx d theta. Now if that doesn't grab you, you can go ahead and, and remember this formula. Uh, just understand that's coming from the product rule being applied to y and x. So if you just confirm that for yourself quickly here, y prime dy d theta is r cosine theta, first derivative the second on y, plus r prime sine theta, second derivative of the first. And similar dx d theta is r times negative sine theta, and then we have r prime cosine theta. So, so how do you get there? But I'm going to go ahead now and define these two parametric equations. So when we say r cosine theta, it's the function itself. r is 3 cosine 2 theta times the cosine of theta. And then y is equal to 3 cosine 2 theta. times the sine of theta. So that's a pretty easy definition to remember. And then I'm going to go ahead and define the derivative dy dx parametrically here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the product rules that I'm, that I'm creating rather than trying to memorize the actual formula. So dy dx and dy d theta, first through the second would be 3 cosine 2 theta times the cosine of theta. And then second derivative of the first, so the derivative of 3 cosine 2 theta is negative 6 sine of 2 theta. So we have a minus here, sine of 2 theta times the sine of theta. And then that's going to be divided by dx d theta. So there we end up with negative 3 cosine 2 theta times the sine of theta. And then second derivative of the first is going to give us negative 6 sine 2 theta cosine of theta. So they, they get pretty messy. Um, you have to be careful with the algebra here. There's a lot of sines and cosines and things flying around. I mean, we could we could cancel out a factor of three if we wished. Uh, ultimately, here, if we would like to do that, that might make things a little bit simpler. So let's just go ahead and do that. But that's really all we can do. So this is going to cancel the factors of three here. This would be a two, and this would be two. And then we can go ahead and evaluate that at the pole. All we have to do at the end of the day is evaluate this at some common angles of theta. So dy dx at, at pi over 4, which would be coming this way through the graph across from that pedal on the right, crossing over from quadrant 1 into quadrant 3. And so when we plug that in, we have cosine of pi over 2 from our double angle there. So that's 0. That's kind of nice when that happens. And then we have minus 2 times the sine of pi over 2, which is 1, times the uh, sine of pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2. In the denominator, we have Again, anytime we see, in this case, when we see the cosine of 2 theta, the result there is going to be 0. Because now I'm talking about the cosine of pi over 2. And then we have minus 2 sine of pi over 2, which is 1 cosine of pi over 4 square root of 2 over 2.
which cleans up to give us a slope of 1. So if you look at the little line segment we've drawn there, we can convince ourselves that's in fact the tangent line slope crossing through. So many times, you know, because in these rows graphs and a lot of these common types of polar functions, your graph will be crossing the uh, the pole at, at special angles. That a lot of times this evaluation is not as difficult as it seems once you look at the big scary derivative there. So let's take a look at a different one. Let's go ahead and do let's do three pi over four. So at three pi over four now we've basically we've rotated through the bottom petal of the rose and then we're coming back we're crossing from quadrant four up into quadrant two this direction so that's what we're looking at so when we go to evaluate here anytime we have cosine three pi over two at zero so we have we have zero minus two times the sine of three pi over two so that's going to be a plus two times the square root of two so ultimately we have 0 plus the square root of 2 on the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have 0. And then the cosine at 3 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. So this is 0 minus square root of 2. And we see there that the tangent line slope crossing at 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. So as we continue around, maybe we can speed up our evaluations just a little bit here. The third one, dy dx when theta is 5 pi over 4. So at this point, we pretty well established the first term in the numerator and denominator is going to be 0. So then we have negative 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 4. So we end up there with a positive square root of 2 ultimately since the sine is negative at 5 pi over 4 and then in the denominator we have 0 minus 2 times the sine of 5 pi over 2 times the cosine of 5 pi over 4 which is negative there so we end up ultimately with a plus square root of 2 there also so dy dx at 5 pi over 4 is positive 1. And so when we look at our graph, as we're, that's where we're crossing from quadrant 3 up into quadrant 1. We're basically retracing the path that we made at, at pi over 4. We're just coming the opposite direction on it. So the slope is the same. And then finally, at 7 pi over 4, if you run the numbers there, what we find is ultimately a slope of negative 1. It, the calculation would be very similar to the one to 3 pi over 4. We'd probably get the idea at this stage. So that would be my slope coming through from quadrant 2 back down into quadrant 4 as we start making our return back to where we started at point three zero. So so nice example of finding tangent line slopes at the pole. Uh, there's a couple of couple of phases to that problem. First is to determine you know when is the graph at the pole and that's just solving the equation r equals zero and then it's a matter of finding your derivative using the, the polar definition of dy dx again you know depending if you want to use the formula or if you prefer to define x and y parametrically and then doing a parametric derivative I kind of recommend that but you can make your, your choice there and then all we need to do is evaluate that derivative equation at the various values of, of theta where we're crossing the pole. If you'd like to learn more about the calculus of polar functions or calculus in general, you can find those on my textbooks available on Amazon for a nice price. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And until next time, I'm P. Clark.